Hello everyone, welcome to the 20th tutorial to a beginner's guide on how to revit. In this video, we will be doing railings. So, if you're already on 3D, why don't we go ahead and ground floor? This time, we will do something a bit different. So, we will be doing our railings outside our model so it can be done clearly. Now, click your stair run. In the modify stair here, click the copy. Let's click somewhere here and drag it outside of our model right here. All right, now it's here. Go back to 3D. Open your visibility graphic option. Annotation. Look for a section box. It's already ticked on. Now, go back to your properties palette. Here, in extent. Check this box. And here it is. Now, go to top here, and let's control the extent of our section box just enough so we can cover the railing there. Now, again, to visibility graphics, annotation, section box, and let's take this off. All right. Okay. Now, there. We've got our stair outside of our house model so we can see it clearly as you see here. Now, go ahead and delete the current railing that we have here. Next, go to Architecture. Here in the railing, we have two choices. Either we sketch path or place on the stair ramp. Let's do the place on stair ramp first. Then here, in position, we've got two choices. Either the railing will be hosted on the stair runs here, sorry, the stair grades, or on the stringer over here. Let's try the stringer first. If I were to click here, you will see there's the railing. But if I were to remove this again and do it one more time, go back to architecture, railing, place on stair up, and we use threads, you will see that it will be put on the thread rather than the stringer or the support. There. See that? But actually, that even without choosing the correct one that we want, that can be done by changing its offset. How? Click your rail. Here in the offset from path, if I were to make this negative uh, 25, you will see it will be hosted on the stringer support. Look at that. It might be a bit off, but if I were to make this negative, sorry, zero, almost, anyway, something around this number. All right, there we go. Next, let's try the sketch. So let's go ahead and delete this one. Let's go to ground floor. Here. Hmm. Let's fix our crop view first. That should be good enough. All right. Now, again, to architecture. Railing sketch path either you can choose line or pick i usually use pick line so let's go ahead and pick the edge of the stringer in between the run here we go here then here all right that should be good enough now press ok hmm. you know what let's just do a line instead There. Now go back to 3D. You will see that the railing is currently hosted on the level, which is the ground floor. To fix that, click your railing, go to pick host, and simply click our stair. There we go. It automatically adjusted on the stair run itself. Now, why don't we go ahead and do some modification or editing? Click the rail. Here, we already have a set of railing that Revit has for us. So we've got this one with the pipe railing, this one that we had originally, and lastly, something like this. Right. Now, as you see, they're all grayed out. Why? Because there hasn't been any material set for it yet. So we'll be tackling that on later. For now, let's use this one so it's easily recognizable. 
go to edit type. Let's first start with the rail structure, non-continuous. Oh, but before we do that, always duplicate. It's always a good practice to do that. Doesn't matter what name you want. For now, I will use this. Right. Now, going back to rail structure non-continuous. Here, we have a list of railings that's currently there. We have four railings. As you see here in 3D, there's four, right? Also, here in preview, if you click this, you will see actually what we got here. Now, it's similar to the 3D view. We can also control it by either going to different elevation types or to a plan, which we currently have. Now, I like mine in 3D since I control it right here, same as we can do in 3D. And here, it has this option. See that? All right. Now, let's focus on the railing area over here. First, we gotta do is, of course, duplicate. Seems self-explanatory enough. The reason you can see it because it's both 700. So if I were to put this to 600 and click apply, there's the new one. Whenever we click something new, that's the one that's currently highlighted on the 3D view that we have. Now, let's go ahead and delete everything and make our own. Click apply, that's it. Now, let's go ahead and insert a rail. Let's try three type of rail. Let's name this one, two, and three. Now, let's make the height of this 300. Everything here starts at zero, which is ground level here. Now, okay, let's make this 200 there. This one is 400 and 600. What if we make this into negative? See that? It went down here since from here, the zero level goes down here to 400 negative. Now, let's put it back to 200. Next is the opposite, of course, self-explanatory. Let's do it like this. If I were to make this 100 and this one negative 100, or rather this one, you will see the difference. It now strays from its path. Let's put it back to zero. Next, let's do a profile. Let's use a circular one. Next one is an elliptical. And next is a square one. This one. Now, if I click apply, you will see the changes. This one seems small, so, oh, sorry. Press escape by mistake. Let's go ahead and do it again. Oh man, all right, let's do everything. Let's put some material on each rail that we had. Going back here. Just so we can see the difference, let's put something different. One is a carpet. Let's try this using a brick here. Next, a wall tiling. Ah, oh, here we got it already. If I were to click apply, there you will see how it automatically adjusts itself okay now let's go ahead and delete the new rail that we accidentally made apply and okay now if i were to click apply here you will now see it being applied here in our 3d view look at that now before i forget one thing i need to make a railing here in the inner stringer let's go back to ground floor Railing, sketch path. I like to make my chain there. All right, moving on. Next up, let's try and make our own rail, prof rail profile. Sorry. Here, 
new family again to English look for metric profile rail here we go all right now open now we go to grade let's make a diameter of 40 mm sorry again great line this one okay now we can actually already use this but seems a little bit too plain and generic let's make things a little bit more interesting just bear with me here for a minute there now now let's split this part here then we trim okay next let's add a flay on it use five or three or ten up to you i'm gonna be using three Now let's go ahead and close this and load it on our prod in our model at the same time. Next, let's now load it into the top rail. Click any rail, go to edit type. Let's minimize this. Let's focus on the top rail area. This button here simply just toggles it off and on. Height, of course, controls its height. Let's make this of 1500. See now, let's put it back to 900. Seems good enough. Going back to type, always duplicate, it's a good practice. Now, let's load the profile that we made, should be this one. Apply. There we go. See that? Now, there's our new railing. Go back here again and edit type. Next, the default join. We need a better view here. Around here should be good. Okay. Again, now see this edge right here. We can actually make that a little bit more smooth or adding a fillet type into it by going to mirror and change this to fillet. Let's make this 50. See that? Now it looks a little bit better. Next up, the hand clearance. It's simply an offset, so let's do it like this here. Sorry, bear here. There. Again, a visual bug. Let's move this here and undo. Now, if I were to change this value to a negative 100, you will see it move to the left. Now, making this to positive 100, goes to the right. There, simply an offset. Now, let's put it back to the way it originally was, which was negative 40. Next is the transition. We need a better view for that. Let's go here. This sudden drop from the run to landing to back to the run. So, let's go ahead and cancel that again in edit type. What we currently have is transition, I believe. If I were to just change this to gooseneck, there, see the difference from none, it will simply disconnect from each other. And if I were to use simple, it would have an immediate drop. So of course, at this point, from run to landing to the next run, a gooseneck transition would be the better choice. All right. Next up is the material. So, as usual, we just have the choice of changing this to whatever we want. Let's give maybe aluminum, rather a copper. If I press apply, it should now look like a copper. There we go. Again, this keeps on having a visual bug. Move it out of place and undo. There we go. Almost done. Next, we will be doing the rail extension style. Let's focus here. 
the bottom part of the stair going back to railing here if we add a length let's say maybe 100 sorry better make it 200 then let's add a thread depth which is always a good choice so that it will adapt whenever the floor is near it or rather the ground level floor there finally the extension style if I had this on a floor this bottom railing will reach the floor with whatever length it has there next post it will go back to its first baluster there we go okay so next the same thing happens to the end top having an extension of 100 and if i make this to floor or other post it will be doing the same there we go see that lastly the termination so let's go ahead and give it a try but usually the termination is much better if the style was to the floor so let's do an example i will change the extension style to floor then here i will be adding a wood termination there we go see that that's what it does now let's add another termination to the other side of the railing never mind it already has one another visual bug right here okay and lastly one quick tip we can actually edit the railing instead of doing those kind of edit styles that we were doing. Simply click here, make sure that the select pin element is ticked off. Now, select or hover to the railing and keep pressing tab until the railing is selected. Click that, unpin here. Now, once unpinned, you will see here in the modify, there will be two new options for us, edit rail and reset rail. Let's do an edit rail. Here, we can load our own profile or edit it, which is very similar to the model in place. Sorry, model in place. Go to front. Let's delete what's existing for us. To make things more interesting, we will be doing some fillet arcs as usual. There. Now, let's do a fillet arc with a radius of 200 is good enough. There. Now, all that's left is to remove the wood termination that we added. Go back to edit type. Back to rails. Here, just make this to none or simply remove the text. Click apply. And that's it. Now, why don't we go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Click the rail. Tab. Again. There. Unpin. Here. Edit rail. Edit path and simply delete this and do the same thing. I don't think I can do this precisely, but no matter. And finish. Alright, so I guess that's it for this video. Next video, I'll be teaching you how to do balusters, which is also a part of railing. If we go back to edit type, here, this is the baluster. So, that will be the focus of, of our next tutorial. Now, for questions and suggestions, please do comment below. And if you can support me by liking and subscribing, I'll be much appreciative. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you in the next video.